Welcome back to Seeker Strength and welcome back to Seeker Stan. Let's talk about North Korea's most recent domination of the Asian Games in the female side of weightlifting and in particular North Korea's domination of Chinese weightlifting who they beat rather soundly. Now this is a bit of an upset and there's a lot of suggestions going around which we'll get to in a minute but first of all let's just take a quick look at some of the results that happened and let's see some of the numbers that the North Korean athletes put up. So first up in the 49 kilo class, Ri Song Gum of North Korea set two world records at the Asian Games. She clean and jerked 124 kilos at 49 kilo body weight and she totaled 216 kilos for the total taking the win. Now, incredible lifting. Next up in the 55 kilo class, Kang Hang Young, I probably did that right, snatched 103 kilos clean and jerked 130 kilos and totaled 233 kilos. The second place was also North Korean Ri Su Young. She snatched 96, clean and jerked 126 and totaled 222 kilos. Third place was Ho Zi Yu, who is a Chinese competitor. Now this isn't her normal class, so this one does have a bit of a caveat. She's generally a 49 kilo lifter and she totaled 210 kilos. Now the argument there is why did China enter a lifter in a class that they knew would be competitive in a spot above, you know, whatever. But just for Ho or Hu, not sure exactly how to pronounce the name. If anyone knows, feel free to let me know. This isn't her usual class, but it is a resounding defeat for a Chinese weightlifter in some of the lighter female classes, which China routinely dominates. Next in the 59 kilo class, we have Kim Il Young, who snatched 111 kilos, clean and jerked 135 kilos for a total of 246 kilos, beating quite solidly by six kilos Lu Shifang from China, who totaled 240 kilos with 107 and 133 kilos respectively for her snatch and clean and jerk. Now it didn't end there. In the 64 kilo category, Rim on Sim snatched 111 kilos and clean and jerked 140 kilos for 251 kilo for the total. And in second place, Pei Jingyi from China took second with 104 and 130. So a resounding defeat in that class also for the Chinese Weightlifting Federation. Now some notable mentions on the men's side, we also have Ri Chang Song won the 81 kilo class. This is the, of course, bastard child of the 77 and 85 kilo class where everyone ends up there or had to move up. He took a very, very solid attempt at the world record for 210 kilos, essentially holding it overhead. And if it was just some training, you'd call this a training make. And then he just dropped it a little bit too early. Now the games aren't over yet. There is one or two more days left, but this is something a lot of people have asked us about and there's been a lot of talk in our weightlifting community where people are talking about their performance and how much of a kind of ridiculous statement or how much of a ridiculous situation this whole thing is. What a lot of people think here, and I agree with them to a large extent, is that what North Korea probably did was take what's known as a gear holiday, or they took a very long time away from international competition, didn't do any internal testing or have any you know, international testing agency or WADA officials testing them, trained a lot, took a lot of gear, and came back out onto the international scene, onto an international competition, and took a lot of medals. And this is basically what happens here. This is the opinion of a lot of people in our weightlifting community via the comments and people questioning and asking and people's thoughts. And this is what we would largely agree with. I think this is pretty much what happens. Now, where I kind of disagree with a lot of people is the outrage at this, that they were allowed to compete, the outrage that they could come and do this. The outrage is the fact and the shocking aspect is that they beat essentially the number one in the world or one of the best weightlifting teams in the world, the Chinese Weightlifting Federation. Now, why is this shocking? This shouldn't really be something that is super outrageous. China essentially have dominated weightlifting for the last 15 to 20 years across multiple different weight classes. Most notably, the female weight category is something that they absolutely have dominated for years but very rarely ever have any positive drug tests. It's come to mind, there's been approximately four positive drug tests in the last 
15 to 20 years for the Chinese Weightlifting Federation, who send essentially full teams of athletes to pretty much every international competition that's a major event. Two of those were retroactive drug tests from the 2008 Beijing Olympics, most notably for very, very new drugs at the time, which were growth hormone producing or growth hormone signaling peptides. Then, of course, we have uh, Lao Hui. I think that's, I always get his name wrong. Lao Hui's drug test, most likely an internal political dispute or potentially a political dispute between the International Weightlifting Federation and the Chinese Weightlifting Federation. The internal dispute is something that may also have credible evidence but it's something we'll never really know but many people believe it wasn't really a gotcha moment by what at the time this wasn't a this wasn't a incredible use of WADA's testing abilities this was largely believed to be a political assassination and then of course most recently we had Lu Zhao Jun's positive drug test for a Poitin or VPO last year so four positive drug tests again which a lot of people speculate is something that was possibly a sacrificial lamb was possibly a large political statement by someone so four drug tests two of which were retroactive and two of which were unusual to say this least this wasn't something where the international testing agency were able to catch someone of their own accord realistically a lot of times in made of thing We'll either have athletes who are politically protected, which is largely what we see with the Chinese Weightlifting Federation, or we'll have athletes who are trying to achieve their best results via good chemistry and bribery, which happens with a lot of countries. And this latter is the one that we most often see getting caught by people such as the WADA or the IT officials. Now, a lot of people are shocked at this, and they're saying this is outrageous that North Korea will to beat. But if we look at the evidence... We should also be shocked then if this is the case, if you believe that this is shocking and you think this is a terrible event and it's crazy that they were allowed to compete. You should also be shocked and outraged and continuously commenting and saying China shouldn't be allowed to compete. And you should be saying that, oh, this is terrible. You should be saying that this is egregious. If we look at the comments on some of these videos, we've stuff like, Why are, what have North Korea been cooking? It's kind of funny. Uh, they got some special rice in North Korea. This must be some 70s, 80s level stacking. Bans Wada takes three years off, collects world records. I hope they've been tested regularly, like how it's done in the free world. I thought IWF banned them. Uh, nothing suspect about having zero drug tests for three years and showing up to slam world records. Uh, gear emojis. Listen, I agree with those people that they almost certainly were taking a load of gear, not being drug tested, and came back. But I think it is a little bit of a double standard to be not egregious and not mad. If we look at the comments, for example, on Erwin's world record, people are saying, can't wait to be witness a 100% shape she versus Erwin. Uh, Rat map will win the games. What class is he in? Two world records in 22 days. Surely two world records in 22 days should produce the same level of uh, vitriol that the North Korean athletes have gotten from people. Now, if you know Seek a Strength and you've watched a lot of videos, you'll appreciate that uh, we don't care. It's not something that we would they judge any athlete for doing. Lots of athletes take performance-enhancing drugs. Most athletes on the international scene take performance-enhancing drugs. But it is important to not have a double standard, I think. And I think it's a little bit unfair in the circumstances. And a lot of people are asking us about this and what we thought about the performance. So this isn't a purely sound bite just to, uh, of their own accord. Some people are asking their thoughts on this, and this is one of my main things that I took from this, is that we shouldn't be super mad at North Korea for doing what many other nations in weightlifting are doing. This is obviously not great for the optics of weightlifting in terms of the Olympics. If they get caught, if they don't get caught, then they'll probably be all right. But you shouldn't be super mad at North Korea, but then at the same time fully on board at watching Chinese weightlifting or watching Irwin's world record from Indonesia. You know, he set two world records in 22 days. This is incredible. Most people, if you max a front squad, can't max again for two months. And he set two world records with, to be honest, relative ease and a phenomenal world record. But I do think it is important that we don't be incredibly shocked at North Korea and then not at all upset at every other athlete who has been taking performance enhancing drugs and doing well in competition. It's not really fair. It's Look, if you are someone who's shocked at North Korea and you're also annoyed at China routinely, then kudos for you for your ethical consistency. But I don't think this is something that is 
exceptionally fair of a stance to take on if we're not going to be shocked at everyone. Now, there is some athletes we've seen talk about it who obviously are very, very annoyed, and they're competitive athletes who either don't take any performance enhancing drugs or in some circumstances there are athletes who are using other means to take performance enhancing drugs such as consultants or maybe some form of intelligent chemistry with their own country but they don't have unfettered use then that brings up the question of degrees of use or degrees of use of peds and zach delander talks about this a lot where he often talks about there's countries who can take more drugs than other countries and who have to take less drugs and it's on a spectrum, essentially, more drugs to a certain extent than weight if thing does produce better world records or better performances. And now, is it more unfair if we're on a sliding scale? It's an interesting talking point, for sure. And there's definitely a bit of nuance to that. And there's definitely a lot of nuance to that in some fashions. But, again, I do think it just, they're thinking about for a second... If you're annoyed and shocked at North Korea's performance, then you should also be consistent with your disdain for those other athletes. And if you are, like I said, perhaps to you, but let's just take a little bit easy on the North Koreans here. They are just playing the game of international sport, and it's not something that will ever change. Is this going to be bad for weightlifting? Who knows? A lot of bad... Weightlifting is bad for weightlifting. The way weightlifting is run is bad for weightlifting. They aren't the cause of weightlifting being kicked out of the Olympics if it does get kicked out. There's... They didn't start this problem. They're just playing the game and they're doing their best, especially for those athletes. So it is an interesting topic. Great weightlifting. Do I think some of them will be popped? Probably. I'm not mad at anyone, by the way. I'm not mad or annoyed at anyone who's made those comments. Um, You know, it is what it is. It is shocking or whatever. It is a notable event in weightlifting. We're here talking about it. But it is important to think a little bit further than our initial reactions when it comes to things like this. It is certainly interesting. It's certainly a statement from North Korea in regards to the Olympics next year uh, in Paris where the bedbugs are going to get everyone. And I bet if a lot of those bedbugs eat enough athletes, they're going to be pretty jacked. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know your thoughts below. It's it's uh, it's weightlifting, just another swing from weightlifting, just another interesting event happening in regards to people's performance. But let me know your thoughts below. And uh, yeah, I'll be interested to see what you guys have to say.